Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Dick van Oeveren and in this sixth video I will show you a lot of cool things that you can do with port based tunneling. In the first five videos I have covered a lot of theory around dynamic segmentation and now it's time to put it to the test and show you all the great things you can do with port based tunneling. In this video I will cover the following items. A straightforward configuration with no security enforcement at the controller, so basically a transparent connection. A Mac authentication based on the internal local database. 802.1x authentication based on the local database. A Mac authentication with ClearPass. 802.1x authentication with ClearPass. And uh, downloadable user roles with the mobility controller. So that's a lot of things to cover. Um, I will go through the setup step by step, so no worries, everything will be clear by the time you see the closing slide. Let's start with the setup, and uh, and this is it. So we have an access switch, uh, on uh, so running on Aruba OS Switch Software version 1609, uh, without any configuration, and we have a layer 2 cluster of four mobility controllers that are managed by a mobility master. The mobility controllers have no configuration except for the cluster configuration, so we're going to set this up from scratch. Um, the mobility controllers are running on Aruba OS software version 8.5. The router is virtualized and it's connected to an internal vSwitch, but you know, in general it really doesn't matter how it's connected. Um, so the router will act as a DHCP server and it will also provide the net service for the VLANs that we will be using for port-based tunneling. And for the external authentication, we have a ClearPass server uh, running on software release 6.8 that we will also be configuring from scratch for the various scenarios. Now for all the scenarios, starting with the most basic one, which is creating the tunnel and allowing all traffic. The first step is to configure the switch. So let's do that. Um, let's give the switch a, uh, another host name call it in sec for example and then what we have to do is we have to configure an IP address on VLAN 1 because we want to have the switch communicating with the mobility controllers let's go to VLAN 1 right so that's 250/24 <coughs> and then the next step is to configure the tunnel node server and set the mode to port based Tunnel node server, controller IP 192.168.0.156 and then my backup controller IP would be 157 and I am going to set the tunnel node server mode to port based. Okay. The next step is to create a VLAN for the tunnel node. So one important thing for uh, port-based tunneling is that um, I can only enable port-based tunneling on ports that are not a member of a VLAN that has an IP address. So if my VLAN has an IP address and that VLAN is assigned to that port, uh, port-based tunneling cannot be enabled. So I need to create another VLAN. So VLAN 100, and I have to assign that VLAN as um, you know untagged to the port uh, that I want to run uh, tunnel node server on. Okay, so port interface one is now an untagged member of VLAN 100. And now what I can do is I can go to interface one and enable tunnel node server on that port. Uh, so, and that's really it for uh, configuring port-based tunneling on the switch. Now what I can do is, uh, let me just exit here, uh, start some debugging. Destination session. And I'm going to debug, uh, debug events. Okay. Um, if I do a show tunneled node server state you can see that my active controller IP address is 156 
and I have a port 1 which is configured for port rage tunneling but the port is down. Now let me connect that port and see what happens. So what you can see is that VLAN 100 is enabled and the tunnel node uh, tunnel is established. Now what happens if I do a show tunnel node server state again you can see that my tunnel is still not complete so it's, it's still not as really established it says in progress. The reason for this is, is that I don't have VLAN 100 configured on the mobility controller end so I need to configure that in order to be able to connect uh, you know to establish that tunnel from a uh, from a switch perspective. So let's do that. I'm going to the mobility controller here um, going to the cluster configuration I go to interfaces VLANs and let me create that VLAN 100 submit it and let's see what we have configured on VLAN 100 okay one important thing is is that that VLAN 100 has to be assigned to uh, to the outgoing interface which is in this case 0 slash 0 slash 0 and what I'm gonna do from an IP perspective is that I'm going to uh, assign the uh, VLAN as DHCP client so that means that the mobility controllers for VLAN 100 obtain an IP address from the DHCP server which is the router um, that I have configured in the lab. Okay, now let me show you the um, one of the controllers. So I should have received an, e an, an IP address for, uh, for VLAN 100. So if I do a show IP interface uh, brief So you can see that the, uh, the communication with the router is established and I have received an IP address from the DHCP server on that mobility controller. So that's working fine. So now that VLAN 100 is configured, I should now have a complete completed tunnel. Right? So if I do a show tunnel node server state again, you can see now that my tunnel is complete and established. So that's cool, that, that's working. Now let me show you what happens on the, uh, on the mobility controller. Now what you see in the top here is that there is a client connected. So if I click on that uh, client, you can see that the client is connected here. You can see a lot of tabs here. Um, so what you can do is you can actually add some more columns if you want. So I can add the cluster standby controller. Well, you can add lots of stuff there, lots of information. Uh, up to you uh, what you want to see. Um, so what you see now here is that my uh, tunnel is established, right? I am using a tunnel to the mobility controller and my role is set to log on. So the, the AAA profile that is used is log on. So which means that there is some sort of authentication mechanism. Now let's define a authentication profile that allows all traffic so no authentication so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the port yeah like that so I'm the client will be gone in a minute and I am going to configure on the cluster I am going to configure an AAA profile okay um, let's create one uh, which we call PBT allow all. Okay. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the initial role to authenticated, which means that if uh, for some reason the MAC authentication or the 802.1x authentication fails, it will fall back into the initial role, which is authenticated. Okay, uh, so the, uh, a, a role is basically a, 
a, a bunch of rules, ACL rules or you know configuration rules that you can apply to an AAA profile. Uh, you'll see much more uh, role configurations later on um, in the videos. Okay, so I've created this uh, profile name. I'm going to submit it and apply the changes. Okay, now what I can do is if I go back to the interfaces and go to that VLAN that I've just created, go to VLAN 100, if I click the more uh, button here, I can select the wired LAN option here and then what I can do is I can assign the AAA profile that I've just created here, the PBT allow all, so basically allowing all traffic. I submit the configuration and commit it to the mobility controllers and um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reconnect the client and so we have to wait a little bit before the client gets connected um, and then once the client is connected uh, let me just refresh the screen once the client is connected you can see that there is a different role assigned now which is called authenticated and basically this role authenticated allows uh, users to you know to access all the services just, l just let me quickly show you the um, the role um, authenticated here um, and that role has uh, some rules which basically says you know allow all traffic okay so that's all working um, let's go to the next scenario which is performing Mac authentication with the internal uh, database so for this I will be creating uh, a, another authentication profile um, so what I'm gonna do going back to the cluster um, go to authentication AAA profile um, and then plus and just give it a name PBT Mac auth okay um, so the initial role is log on and what I'm gonna do is I'm get going to set the Mac authentication default role to to log on as well uh, submit and what I have to do for the Mac auth, I have to set some authentication mechanisms here. So let me start with the Mac authentication. I need to select a Mac authentication profile. And in that profile, you can set some param parameters. So one of the parameters is the delimiter. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I am going to use the Mac address format with colons. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set the colon and the so I'm submitting that and for the Mac authentication server group I'm going to select the internal server okay so I'm going to submit those changes okay and then the next thing I have to do is obviously I have to create create that user in the internal uh, user database so I'm going to copy that, uh, that address and um, so I need to configure that in the on the mobility master so I've got the internal database here so you can see that there's already a user in here but just let me add another one uh, which will be in the MAC address And the password, obviously, for Mac authentication is the Mac address as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the guest um, role to that user. Submit it. Okay, so that's saved. Now I'm going to go back to the Aruba cluster 
I'm going to the interfaces, the VLANs, and I'm going to assign that MAC authentication profile to that VLAN. Okay, um, and th and that's it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to connect the client again and uh, see what happens on the authentication part. So when I click the client, you see now that the guest role is assigned. So, means that the um, MAC authentication is performed. So the client is authenticated against the guest uh, role, not the logon role, right? Because um, if I go to my configuration here, if you remember the AAA profile for MAC authentication here, um, so the MAC authentication default role is logon. However, the authentication that has taken place, um, the successful authentication, the guest role is applied for that user. So that's uh, so that's all uh, that's all working. Now for the next scenario, which is 802.1x using the internal database. So it's actually very easy. Um, so I. I mean, what I can do is I can do two things um, for the authentication uh, profiles for 802.1x. I can also actually use the Mac authentication profile if I want, um, but I, you know, I want to uh, separate those profiles later on because I want to assign them to different VLANs uh, in later videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate profile for 802.1x. Okay. So pbt 802.1x uh, and I'm going to set the default role to log on as well. Um, leave all the other parameters, which is fine. And then what I'm going to do is I need to configure the 802.1x section here. So um, simple, simply I'm going to select the internal database initially. Okay. And for the authentication part, I will be using the default uh, default profile. Um, and for this, what I have to do is I have to do some stuff here. I have to enable termination. Uh, I have to add the uh, EAP types. So I'm go also I'm going to add PEEP here. And for the inner EAP type, I need to use MSCHAP v2. Submit that one. See, it's there now. Okay, so that's the that's the profile. And then um, the next thing I need to do is I need to create an internal user. So I'm going to the mobility master, to the internal server, and I am going to add a user here called employee. And set a password. And I am going to set the role to um, authenticate it. Okay, submit that one. I'm going to deploy the changes. And then finally in the cluster, what I need to do is I have to assign the AAA profile the 802.1x AAA profile to the VLAN. Okay, commit the changes again. And that's it for the configuration. Now let me connect a 802.1x client and um, let me log into that client. Okay, so I'm logged in and let's see what happens. So yeah, I can see that there is a client here now in the list 
and you can see it's authenticated using 802.1x wired authentication uh, you know it's using the authentic uh, authenticated role and my username is employee so that's uh, that's all working too next is to see whether we can start authenticating using clearpass as authentication server this will require some configuration on ClearPass, but let me first change the configuration on the mobility controller so that the authentication is done by ClearPass. For this, I will be creating a new server group and add the ClearPass server as the AAA service. Uh, so I'm going to go to the cluster configuration. In that configuration, select the authentication and the authentication servers here. So I'm going to create a new group. Clear pass. And in that group I will add that clear pass server. And with the IP address, it's a radio server. And in that clear pass entry I have to obviously set the shared secret okay submit that one submit the changes that's done and now what I have to do in the AAA profiles I need to change the authentication server group so for 802.1x I'm going to use the clearpass server here submit it and for the Mac auth server group I'm going to set that to clear pass as well submit commit now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first test this with Mac authentication so in the VLANs I have to change the AAA profile again to Mac auth and that's it so we should be ready to go from the mobility controller perspective now let's move to clearpass uh, so in clearpass I have to configure uh, some items here as well first one the first step is to configure the devices so I'm going to add the mobility controllers at, as device so actually what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to add the whole subnet 0.0/24. So this means that any request that comes in from a device that is within that subnet will be using this device entry. Okay, let's add the shared secret here. Okay, so that's your services subnet. Um, and then the next part is to create the profiles, policies and service. Now before I do that let me check the local users uh, database because I'm using the local user database um, as the authentication source. Um, you can see that there are already some uh, MAC addresses configured in there so they're already occupied and what I'm going to do is I am going to add the 802.1x user so I can use that one for the 802.1x authentication okay so that will be the employee role okay um, so now for the uh, profiles so I need to create uh, three profiles here or two profiles sorry and uh, they are Aruba radius enforcements the first one is for Mac authentication um, the um, attributes here are the Aruba user role so this is the user role that exists on the mobility controller so for the Mac authentication I will be using the guest role okay let's save that profile and create another one also an Aruba radius enforcement I call it PBT802.1x and 
in the attributes I will be assigning the authenticated role to that profile to that VS VSA okay so that's the profiles now let's go to the uh, policies and let's add a policy here called pbt mac auth my default profile would be deny access and I'm going to add a simple rule here saying that if my uh, user is authenticated I am pushing the Mac auth user role and what I'll also do is I'll do the post authentication update endpoint no it's always a very handy feature there if you want to do some fingerprinting um, save that one and so that's the uh, PPT let's just let me filter it out and I'm going to add another one for 802.1x also deny access as default profile and add that rule here as well just user authenticated you can add m many more rules here but I'll just keep it very simple um, user authenticated here and I'm going to apply the 802.1x role and also the update endpoint known. That's the policy. And um, next is to create the services. So just let add one for um, Mac auth. And that's a generic enforcement. Um, so what I need to do is add the Mac auth authentication method here and my authentication source is the local user repository and for the enforcement I am enforcing the PBT Mac auth policy so that's the Mac auth and let me add another one which is um, the um, 802.1x it's also a generic radius enforcement 1x um, in my authentication methods I need to add some authentication methods here uh, I'm going to do mm, peep for the inner I need to add MS chap I um, need to add TLS, um, I'll just let me add TTLS as well, just to make sure I've got everything covered there. And the also the lo local user repository here. And for the enforcement, I am using the PBT 802.1x policy. Now let me connect the client and see what happens. Um, for that, I can go to the access tracker which is a very cool tool in ClearPass. You can see exactly what happens there. Um, what you can see is I am getting a reject here, so which is not very good. But let's see what's, uh, what's the problem here. So what I can do is I can go to alerts. And what it's saying here is that the user is not found in the local host uh, database. So that means or that implies that this device uh, does not exist in the local user database so let me just go back into the configuration go to the local users and yeah I don't think it's there so let me just add that user uh, obviously for Mac auth that password needs to be the same we'll just, just let's assign the other Roll to that. I'm not using roles for now. Clear pass. Okay, mm, that's it. So that user is added. Now let me just reconnect and see what happens in the access tracker. So let's just move back to the access tracker. And 
I, I get an accept now, which is good. Um, let's check out the output. Um, so what I'm doing here is, well, actually what ClearPass is doing here is, is that it's pushing the VSA, uh, Aruba user role VSA, and that contains the value guest. So that sounds good. So let me just move back to the controller. Just log in again and see whether I have a client connected. And yes, I have. And you can see here that it's using the guest role and it's authenticated. So that means that the ClearPass communication uh, is working. Now let's move to 802.1x. Let's, let's uh, test that client as well. Now the first thing I have to do is I have to go back to the controllers and apply the right AAA profile to the VLAN. So going back again and assign the 802.1x profile. Now that's done. And uh, so now let's uh, let's put it to the test. Let me just connect the client and log in. Okay, so my authentication is not successful at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my favorite tool in ClearPass, which is the access trigger. So what I'm seeing here is that I'm getting a reject, um, but I'm, I'm not using the right service, right? It's like I need to use the 802.1x service, and it's not using that. So it's triggering, for some reason, it's triggering the Mac auth. Uh, service instead of the 802.1x service. Now I can there I I can do two things about this. So uh, what I can do is I can and so that's the easy one. I can reorder the service so that the 802.1x service is triggered first before the Mac auth service. So what I can do is I can reorder and put that to the seventh position. Um, the, the other thing I can do, which I'm not going to do now, uh, I'm, go I'm going to do that, I'm going to show that to you in a later video, is I'm, I can add service rules that kind of like, um, that allow you to trigger a specific service based on those service rules. So, but I'm not going to do that for now, I'm just going to make sure that this service is triggered first. Now let me just reconnect the client uh, again. And let me uh, let me log on again. And see if that works. Let me just move to the access tracker again. Okay, uh, I'm still getting a reject. However, I'm the right services uh, selected. So so that's good. Let me check out the alerts. Um, it's saying you cannot select the appropriate authentication method. Okay, so that's something that is configured in the service. Let me just go to the 802.1x service. For the authentication part, it is important that the authentication methods that you are using for the 802.1x client exist in here and they are in the right order. So for some reason, there is um, there's one authentication method missing. So what I'm doing is this is probably the authentication method that's missing, the MSCHAP one. I'm going to save that one and let me just try it again for the third time. Normally what happens is that third time things start to work. Okay, so let's see. I'm logged in now. Let's see what happens now. I should get a accept here there you go there's my accept um, checking the output and the Aruba user role VSA authenticated is now pushed to the mobility controller so let's check out the mobility controller um, let's check out the clients yes I've got a client here 
and it is authenticated using 802.1x wired authentication. Now let's see whether we can get some user roles downloaded from ClearPass. This means that the user roles don't have to be configured on the mobility controllers anymore. They are uh, dynamically downloaded from ClearPass using an SSL connection. The, um, the first step is to configure the mobility controllers to allow the download of user roles. Um, so what we have to do is we have to configure that in the AAA profiles. So let me go to the 802.1x and what I have to do is I have to tick that box here, download role from CPPM. And I have to do the same, obviously, for the Mac auth download role from CPPM. So commit the changes. And the second thing I have to do is I have to go to the auth server, select the ClearPass server, and what I have to do is I have to provide the CPPM credentials here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the admin user. Um, but what you can do is you can create a read-only administrator user on ClearPass and you can use that read-only administrator account for, uh, for the CPPM credentials. So let me just add the password here. and submit that one okay so that's the mobility controllers um let's move back to clearpass so what i have to do for clearpass is really it's not that difficult so what i'm going to do is i am going to create two new profiles and I'm going to assign those profiles to the existing policies. And the profiles that I will be creating are a Aruba downloadable role enforcement profiles. So just give it a name. Um, mobility controller, let's say downloadable user role, Mac auth. The product is a mobility controller. And then what I can do is I can configure the role here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to assign VLAN 100 here. And what I can do is I can, I believe I already have that in there. Yeah, let me just remove it and add it again so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so what you can also do is you can add those net services, net destinations, but you can also add um, ACLs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a session access control list. Uh, I'm going to name that one allow all. And I'm going to add a rule here permitting all traffic. So very straightforward. If you want, you can add some different rules here. I mean, up to you. And then what I can do is I can select that ACL and I can add it to the ACL list. Okay. And then save that one off. So that's my Mac auth. Let me add another one for 802.1x. Uh, again, that's your mobility controller. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to configure the same uh, items because it's just, I mean, it's, it's about the idea of how you, uh, how you set things up. Add that one. Okay. Save it off. And then what I can do is uh, in the policies, what I can do is in the service rule or in the rules, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that profile and I'm going to add the Mac auth downloadable user role profile. I'm going to do the same for 802.1x. I'm just going to uh, change that one. Uh, edit rule. Uh, remove that. 
and add the downloadable user role and go to the 1x, save it off, and that's it. Now, on the on the client, I still have 802.1x uh, enabled, so let me just test 802.1x uh, first. So I don't have to change that on the uh, on the mobility controllers as well. So let me just log in. and see what happens in the access tracker. I see an accept here, and let me check the output, the radius response. Yes, so what you can see here is that I am now pushing a uh, another type of VSA. I'm pushing the downloadable user role to the mobility controller. Now let me check the mobility controller. Let me check the client. And you can see here now that this role is now pushed for that client. So it's not a role anymore that exists on the mobility controller. It's a role that exists on the um, on, on ClearPass and it's downloaded to the mobility controller. Now let me just quickly show you the Mac authentication um, setup. Um, again, I have to change that here to make auth. Okay, going back to the access tracker. I'm just going to connect the client again. So, no 802.1x enable on the client, just make authentication and see what happens here. I should get an accept. Actually, no, I'm getting a reject. And you know why that is. It's the uh, authentication method. So what I have to do is I have to move that service down again. Okay, let's try it again. And Check out the access tracker, and you can see now that the right service is selected again. And in the output, I get the Mac auth role being pushed. Okay, going to the mobility controllers. I see that client here, and it's using the Mac auth downloadable user role with Mac authentication. Do you want to see more? Well, you have to wait until the next video where I will be showing you how to configure an external captive portal with ClearPass. And I end this video by saying thanks for watching, a thumbs up if you like the video, and if you have any suggestions, ideas or questions, please let us know. And subscribing to the ABC Networking channel is free of charge and there is a lot of great content that's just for grabs. See you later and have a great day.